This is the lecture for Lewis Carroll's What the Tortoise Said to Achilles. So the first two points we're going to cover about topic and method. As we go through a lot of our readings, especially the initial readings, uh, since part of our question in this class is what is philosophy, and we want to learn a bit more about philosophy, I'm going to point out some of the topics that philosophy investigates and some of the methods that philosophy uses to investigate these topics. So the first topic we're starting with with this article is logic. So this is an article about logic and what is logic? Uh, it's a confusing question, but broadly logic is uh, sort of the study of reasoning and the study of uh, the processes of reasoning and uh, what makes up those processes. And specifically, it's the study of sort of good reasoning um, or logical reasoning in the sense that we're not interested in sort of everything that counts as reasoning. So a psychologist might study reasoning to uh, uncover how humans do it, but humans might not be very good at it. And in fact, there are all sorts of uh, cognitive biases that uh, are built into the ways that we reason about things. And those are all very interesting, and philosophy has things to say about those too. But that's not really the topic of logic. Logic is sort of interested in what does reasoning done right look like? What are sort of the rules of reasoning? Uh, so a very simple example is uh, if we have a statement like, if it's Tuesday, then you have class, and then we have another statement, it's Tuesday, then we can sort of conclude that you have class today. How can we do that? Well, through using logic. So logic is the study of this sort of thing, whatever it is, and philosophy has quite a bit to say about uh, this, and this is one of the oldest branches of philosophy, and it's what we're reading about in this article. Moving on to the next topic, the method. So you'll notice as you read this article that it's in the form of a dialogue between Achilles and a tortoise. So this is a method that philosophers have used for a long, long time uh, in order to sort of communicate an idea or explore an idea. Uh, philosophers will often write a dialogue where two or more people are sort of talking back and forth and uh, expressing various viewpoints. This is relatively uncommon today. Uh, we're reading a sort of contemporary one by Carroll, and we'll actually see another dialogue by Sorensen later. Uh, mostly philosophers don't write dialogues anymore, uh, but it was very, very common in the past. So Chinese philosophy, Indian philosophy, Greek philosophy, these all have lots of dialogues in them. So this is one of the things that philosophy has done, and still sometimes does, uh, to investigate these topics. So now moving on a bit to the content of the article. So uh, the article starts off, Achilles had overtaken the tortoise and had seated himself comfortably on its back. And so just to understand what's going on here, what Carroll is alluding to is one of Zeno's paradoxes of motion. So Zeno was an ancient Greek philosopher, and one of the things he came up with was these various paradoxes about how motion works. And specifically, this is the one of Achilles and the tortoise. So the way it works is that it's a paradox designed to show that Achilles can never beat uh, a tortoise in a race if you give the tortoise whoops if you give the tortoise a head start so the thought is we're ready to begin the race the tortoise gets to start ahead of achilles and let's say we start the race and so after 2 seconds achilles who is a very fast runner he's immediately caught up to the tortoise but in the 2 seconds it took achilles to catch up to the tortoise uh, the tortoise has gone on a bit and so achilles is still behind and you say, no problem, in the next second, Achilles can easily cover that distance and catch up to the tortoise. But it took him one second to do that. And no matter how slow the tortoise is, it did at least move during that second. And so then Achilles catches up again, but in the time it takes him to do that, the tortoise has moved on and so on. And so this is a paradox because on the one hand, of course, Achilles can beat a tortoise in a race after one second, he's gonna blow past the tortoise and win. So we all know that Achilles can win, but we've just sort of demonstrated that Achilles cannot win, and so we have this strange paradox. So that's the paradox that uh, Carroll is alluding to. And one thing you want to think about when you're reading this article is what is the link between what Carroll talks about in this article and the story, the paradox of motion, the Achilles and the tortoise story. And there's not one right answer here. I don't think it's there's just one reason that uh, Carroll is alluding to this paradox. I think there's all sorts of links you can draw between the 
Zeno's paradox and what Carroll is doing in this article. Moving on to the next topic, so the idea of an argument. So there is a short video on arguments posted somewhere on Canvas, but I'm going to sort of reiterate what that is, especially because it's relevant here and then for every single reading for the rest of the course. So the normal English term argument is like people yelling at each other and getting angry and stuff and disagreeing. That's not what we mean in philosophy. In philosophy, an argument is sort of uh, reasons for uh, believing something and then that something. So reasons to convince you of some conclusion or some set of conclusions plus those conclusions. And so we get some arguments in this article and we get arguments in all the articles we're going to read. But here's sort of one of the articles. So uh, we have a first premise. So the sort of initial parts of an argument are typically called premises. So premise A, things that are equal to the same are equal to each other. Premise B, the two sides of this triangle are things that are equal to each to the same. And then conclusion, the two sides of this triangle are equal to each other. So this is an argument. These two reasons, when you put them together, support this conclusion. So an argument is giving reasons that support a conclusion. And that's kind of almost the entirety of what we're interested in this course. We're interested in reasons that support various conclusions. And part of what this article is doing is interrogating that kind of notion, like what is it for reasons to support a conclusion? And so that's one of the things you want to think about as you read it. Uh, but also just to keep in mind when you see the word argument and when you think about what are we doing in this course when we're talking about arguments, this is the notion of argument we have in mind. Reasons or premises which support one or more conclusions. Now finally, moving on to the last topic, normativity. So uh, at one point in the article, uh, Achilles says, then logic would take you by the throat and force you to do it, Achilles triumphantly replied. Logic would tell you, and so on. And so what Achilles is claiming here, he's making a claim about uh, what logic would sort of force the tortoise to do, or what logic would uh, constrain the tortoise to do. The tortoise must, if the tortoise is being logical, do conclude something. And as you read the article, you'll understand what the conclusion is. And so one thing when you read the article you want to think about is what does Achilles mean by this? What does he mean when he says logic would force you to do something? So Achilles himself doesn't really know, and kind of the main question in the article is what does Achilles mean by this? So that's the main thing to keep in mind. So what exactly is being alluded to here, or what exactly is being described here? What is it to say that logic forces you to do something? And then more broadly speaking, one of the ways we can think about what's going on here is with this idea of uh, what's called in philosophy normativity. So normativity is kind of a confusing term, and we're going to see it a lot in some of these initial lectures just because it keeps coming up, and I'm going to try to keep explaining it each time, and hopefully it'll make more sense each time. But starting with the first time we're seeing it, just right now, so the idea of normativity is involved in uh, topics where uh, things can be better or worse, or good or bad, or sort of judged according to some standard, um, or sort of evaluated according to some standard. Um, normativity involves what you should do or how things should be, how like the, it would be better if things were this way, or what you shouldn't do, or uh, how you should not be, or how things should not be. It would be worse if things were like this. It would be good or bad if things were like this. So normativity is sort of used for judging the world or evaluating the world, um, saying, talking about shoulds and oughts and things like this. And uh, I think the best way to think about it is to start to get some examples. So the clearest example of normativity, maybe the most common example of normativity, is morality. So morality is all about judging things to be morally good or morally bad, saying something is morally right or morally wrong, saying you ought to do something or you ought not to do something. So morality is a sort of normative enterprise. Uh, another good way to understand normativity is to take an example of something that's not normative. Uh, and so one potential example of this is science. So science, you might think, is not telling us how things ought to be. It's not telling us what's good or bad or right or wrong or something. It's just telling us how things happen to be, how things are. 
uh, what the world is like, whether or not that's good or bad. It's not judging the world according to some standard, it's just making a big list of facts about the world. So morality is one kind of normativity. There's other kinds of normativity too. There's lots of kinds of normativity if you think about it. We'll see a few more as we go through the course. The, what Achilles is kind of alluding to here is that logic is potentially something with some sort of normative force. Logic is something that sort of evaluates you, and you can be illogical or logical, and sort of there's this standard of logic which you can live up to or fail to live up to. And uh, he says to the tortoise that you're, you're failing to live up to the standard of logic if you don't conclude this thing. So that's our first introduction to normativity. It may not make a lot of sense. That's fine. It's a complicated topic, and we're going to keep seeing it as it comes up. But I mention it now because it's helpful to think about one of the central questions of this article, which is, what really does Achilles have in mind when he talks about this sentence? <laughs>